Welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, this is the Dave Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. Sitting in for Dave, I'm Dr. John Deloney, here with my good friend, best-selling author, podcast extraordinaire, Mr. Anthony O'Neill. How are you doing, good man? Hey, man, I'm feeling good today. It's a beautiful day here in Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, looking forward to serving and helping as many people as we possibly can today. Outstanding. All right, let's go right to the phones. Let's go to Hunter in Washington, D.C. Hunter, what's going on? How can we help? Hi, thanks for taking my call. I appreciate it. You got it, man. What's going on? So um, I'm calling, um, my wife and I are calling on behalf of a family member. Um, we've been watching them make a lot of bad financial decisions recently, and we've tried to talk with them you know, nicely and gently to kind of guide them in the right direction, but they keep continuing to make bad decisions, and we're getting pretty worried about them, kind of starting to realize that maybe we need to be a little more aggressive, but we don't want to obviously mess up that relationship. Who's so, this family member? Have any advice. Who's the family member? Uh, sister-in-law. Hmm. And then her husband. So. so how honest do you want me to be, Hunter? Uh, as honest as you should be. <laughs> There's not a lot you can do, man. Um, you can't make somebody make good decisions with their money. You can model the right way to live your life. You can have a a kind, dignified, respectful, hard conversation, if you will. Um, most of the time people know that they're not making good decisions and more information or a lecture isn't going to help them. What do you think, Anthony? No, I'm right there uh, with you on that one, uh, JD. Um, I think that, Hunter, you just got to have an honest conversation. Once you have that honest conversation, you've done the very best that you can do. Uh, move on and focus on you if you have a family and your family, you know. Uh, but I think oftentimes what we tend to do is take on the stress and the pain and the hurt and the responsibility of others rather than just focusing on ourselves. Yeah. Um, go have an honest conversation. Hey, you're making some unwise decisions. Um, I see you going down this path and this path is leading to destruction. Uh, and if they hear it, great. If they don't hear it, cool. You've done your part, but don't be overstressed about it. Take care of you and your family, and you'll be all right. Is that hard to hear, Hunter? Yeah, I mean, you know, my wife and I, are, we, we've done all right for ourselves, but, uh, you know, it, it's hard to watch someone continue to make bad decisions. Uh, and especially, it just seems like, you know, you can't get through to them. So. Yeah, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking to find out what we can and can't control sometimes, right? especially with folks we love. And it's even harder when you know you're going to be responsible in some shape, form, or fashion on the back end, right? When it's your parent and you know they are burning through money, Anthony, and they're probably going to end up having to live with us at some point, or I'm going to have to make a hard call. And those are challenging, challenging moments. And you can do what you can do and not hold the outcome. Is it really heartbreaking? I don't know if it is for me, bro. It is for me. Why would oh, you say bro. it's not? I mean, because it's like if I'd done everything within my power mm -hmm. to, to help them, I'm not going to be hurt for something that I cannot control. Yeah, I'm a more empathetic human you than are. you are. You are. <laughs> I'm just going to be real. I mean, because if I told my parents all these years, hey, pay off your debt, do this, do that, do this, do that, and then they decide not to listen, why am I hurt by that? It just, I, I hate to see people I love hurting. But they chose to hurt. That's right. So yeah. I, I, I'm not hurt to see you choosing to hurt. It's empathy, yeah. Just that's that's my that's that's my. You're a counselor, that's why. My, I, I'm just. They call me. A, I ain't gonna say that. But. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to Jennifer in Philadelphia. Before we're not, we're not gonna get two calls out here before we get right. canceled. All right, Jennifer, what's going on? How, how how can I help? Hey, how's it going? Good. Um, so my husband and I are both unemployed. We're both generating no income, having both been laid off. And uh, we've recently moved from California to the East Coast and are now staying with family. My husband just purchased a, um, a small business and he wants to take out, he purchased that in cash. And he wants to take out another about $15,000 uh, small business loan. And we have about 25000 more in um, credit card debt. So that is our total debt at this time. 
Uh, we have been living off of our 401k. So my question is whether we should, um, we have about 60000 left in our 401k. If we should take from that to pay off this credit card debt and this small business loan, and then my second question is: Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Let's let's oh. let's just let's, 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 let's talk about this first question first, because this first question okay. may not even make it to the second. Well, her second question was revealing. Go ahead, Anthony. Yeah, how do you create a budget with no income? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 so. Okay, Wusa, Wusa, Wusa. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're I'm, taking I'm, deep, meditative yes, breaths, Jennifer. Yes. You know, we, we're going to lead with love, you know. <laughs> we're going to lead with love today. We're going to lead with love, all right? Uh, first off, um, thank you for calling in to the show. That's number one, okay? Uh, number two yeah. is, um, let, me make sure I ha- I may, let, me, let me make sure I have the correct picture here. Both of you all are unemployed. You moved from California to Pennsylvania, which is great, all right? Uh, You have no money. You went and paid cash for a business that a business normally takes about three years to to start producing positive cash flow. Then you have a 401k that you haven't transferred into a traditional IRA to set you up for your future. Now you want to take out more debt and possibly borrow from your 401k to establish another type of business or to go into the business and still neither one of you all are working and you're living with your, 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 your family members. Is that picture correct that I just painted? It's not as bleak as that, but it's pretty correct, except that the business that he bought was um, a pretty nominal fee. It was like $3,000 and it's a, um, it's like a tech, um, the tech support business so he can jump in and start making income pretty much within the next couple of months he's okay. just cleaning up the shop okay um i am i am working i'm i'm in travel and so i got a gig where i'm working now but i'm only getting paid on commission and some of these people aren't traveling until like 2022 yes. so i won't see money until then so um so, so jennifer yeah. because we're running out of time here and i want to make sure i give you your answer here the very first thing that you two need to be doing is you all need to get on the plan okay you need to get on the plan as far as and get a job both of you all need to get a job at least to start off Okay, now three thousand dollars spending on a small business, I'm okay with that. But if if I would have caught you beforehand, I would have said no. You need to be stacking all of your cash, and so that way you all can live. So that way you can take care of your four walls. You shouldn't be investing into a company when you're living with family right now. And no. when you say get a job, you're talking Home Depot, yeah. McDonald's, yeah. Uber, whatever. Right. Get do what you got to do right now, so you can eventually do what you really want to do. But right now, you all need to get your priorities covered. You're in an emergency. Yeah. You you don't have the you don't have the capability of spending three thousand dollars on a business right now. You need to be spending three thousand dollars on yourself so you can take care of your priorities. Now, once you get your priorities situated, then call back into the show. Holla at John. Holla at myself. Holla at Dave. Holla at the personalities, and we'll help you out. But right now, get your life straight. You're broke. Yeah. You gotta eat. Yeah. Get jobs. Get the a priorities bunch of them. done. Oh, I'm frustrated. We're going already. Man. Two calls in. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. Folks, it's an honor to tell you about the Army National Guard. Not only are they big supporters of our high school curriculum, but they also give you the opportunity to impact your local communities. Whether your goals are to get an education, serve your country, or have a better life, the Army National Guard can help get you there. Plus, they offer unbelievable financial benefits. Secure your future today. Visit NationalGuard.com to find out more. show i'm john deloney joined by my good friend podcast youtube extraordinaire anthony o'neill we're taking your calls on life money 
Anything that's going on, 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. So, Anthony, you lost a, uh, you launched a podcast. I did, man, and it's doing very, very well right now. Catching a lot of interesting uh, thoughts. Um, this week is, as, as we all know, it's Black History Month. And so on the first week of every single month, I take the opportunity to just bring in some uh, black people. And we talk about uh, our thoughts and our feelings on how, how do we feel um, as a black individual. And not everyone agrees with everything. Uh, but, man, I will tell you right now, uh, the views, the comments, the perspectives are just insane. I mean, we're, we're getting a lot of views. We're getting a lot of attention with it. So I want to encourage everyone uh, to to take your time to watch the Black History panel this week and come into this with the perspective of listening to learn, not listening to respond. So one of the important, if, if you were to say, hey, Deloney, what's one of the most important things that's happened in your marriage the last couple of years? It was this perspective we, my wife and I had when we shifted from judgment mm -hmm. to curiosity. Oh, that's good. When she would say, hey, will you, can you help pick this up? And my first thought was, do you know how busy I am at mm. two? Mm. Mm. Tell me how that, tell me how I can help. Right. Yeah, 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 and yeah. it was, it's been a game changer for all of us. Right. Yeah, and it yeah. goes all the way through that same shift from judgment to curiosity yes. has helped me have political conversations. Yes. Has helped me have hard yes. cultural conversations has helped me. Yeah. When you and I are talking. Absolutely. And it's helped me. I mean, we all know this. You all, if you listen to the Dave Ramsey show, you heard me say this before. When I first got here, man, I, I really was offended by the word redneck. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was offended. Yeah. And then when I sat down and said, hey, Dave, hey, Rachel, hey, hey, JB, like, what does this mean? Like, this doesn't mean good to me. So help me understand. I was literally listening to learn. Right. Not because to go to war. Not to, to go to learn. war. Not to come back and fight, but to be like, yo, in my culture where I come from in the black community, you say redneck, that's automatic racist. Mm. And I'm like, when I came here and I heard Dave say that, I heard somebody, I was like, yo, what? Well, wait, wait. But then when I listened to learn, I learned exactly what this word actually means. Mm. And I was like, okay, cool. Great. And so that's what I'm saying is so important because it. you're right. Once you listen to learn, man, you can go into so many rooms. I go into so many rooms that I don't agree with 50% of what they're saying, but I leave, watch this, smarter the way I came in mm. because I went into the room to listen to have a conversation. And here's my thing. If everyone thinks and agrees uh, just like you in your circle, you don't have a circle. You don't have a circle. You do not have a circle. If you only read books that you already know you're going to agree with. Yeah. And, and if you're a Republican and you don't know any Democrats, you, you, you have a bad circle. And vice versa. And Democrats, you don't have any Republicans, you're in a bad circle. Like if, if, if you're black and all you got is black friends, you need a bigger circle. Mm -hmm. Okay. We, we all need to be challenged to be thinking outside of our boxes because at the end of the day, my world is small mm. your world is small but our world combined yeah. is big and it's beautiful i love coming on this show and talking with you and talking with dave and talking with rachel and talking with ken and hearing different perspectives man because it just helps me as a man and then i can pass this down to my kids and show them hey listen we can, we can do this thing together and so that's just one thing that i really 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 love about this black history panel was to just really dive in and have a conversation and dave said this on monday when he and i did the show yeah um you know some people may not like it mm -hmm. you, you may not agree with everything that they're saying but everyone has the right to their feelings everyone has a right to their perspective and i think it's always fair to just understand how people feel you don't have to agree right with them but it's important for me to know john how do you feel about this yeah and then when I hear your feelings, I'm just taking it as that. That's how he feels. Yep. Then later on down the road, we can come back and have a conversation about, okay, hey, let's talk about truth how, and facts. Exactly. And, yeah, yeah. But we can, no one has ever, we say this all the time, no one has ever changed their mindset because they lost yeah. an argument, right? Yeah, no. No, if you go into a conversation expecting to agree or to argue, you've you've already failed from the very beginning. Well, that's because you've made the conversation about, you've made it, you've made it, a competition. Yes. You've, you've provided rules of engagement instead yes. of, hey, man, pass the rolls, have a, have a seat. Exactly. You want sweet or unsweet tea. Yeah. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, yeah. And now you can accomplish a lot. You got to. I love it, man. Well, I'm, I appreciate you having the conversations. I appreciate you putting the message out there. If you, I, I'm going to repeat what Anthony just said. If you are not challenged. Yeah. 
on a regular basis, not in a where you, you, you only watch this news channel and so you flip it to the other one just because you want to get your blood pressure up. Not like that. That's right. nonsense. Right. If you don't have people in your life that you love, that your kids play with their kids, yeah. that you share food with, that yeah. you laugh and share conversations with, that also challenge you, that also say, why do you, why do you think like that? Yeah. That doesn't make sense to me at all. I think it's like this. If you don't have those people in your life, seek and find them. Cultivate those friendships. Some of the best conversations that have transformed my life when I really sit back and think about it are those from people who do not think like me. Of course. One of the best conversations I had was with a, with a Muslim, and I totally disagree uh, with with their faith. But the conversation, I was like, yo, I never... I never thought about it like that. Mm. And I was able to take some of their some of their small nuggets and, and apply it in my life and it just was beneficial. Mm. When I first got here, I won't say what it was, but me and Dave had a heart to heart conversation about something. And I was like, yo, Dave, I never thought about that. Mm. I took some time off of work. I went home, prayed, thought, processed the conversation, came back and said, Dave, you're right. Mm. I'm sorry. Yeah. And that's because me and Dave didn't see eye to eye on something, but he helped me to see something clearly because I walked in there with the open mind. That's right. And I think that's so important for everybody, wherever you are. If you want to grow, you have to have an open mind, which you're the king of that, man, with your show. I've been listening to your show. I'm like, yo, bro, how did you get that? Like, how did you, what? <laughs> like, John, what, did, how? But it's like, you listen and you listen, okay, how is she feeling? How is she processing mm -hmm. things? How, what perspective is she coming through on the, on the Don, Dr. John Deloney show? And I'm like, you're great at it. Because I don't like, no, no. <laughs> but John, you're like, okay. So how do you feel about that? So a goal of mine is that the, the Amazon the Amazon marketplace algorithm that follows me yeah, yeah. can't figure it out. Oh. Right? That's the goal. I'm ordering this book and that book and yeah, buying yeah. that CD and yeah. listening to this music yeah. because I never want to feel like I've arrived. If I'm going to continue to read, continue to grow, I always want to be having conversations. Here's the other thing. I just love people, man. That's good. And there's just a few things. And yeah. when I get to a man, you, yeah. people know there's a few things that I will not move on. I will not budge on. These are core Deloney values. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Outside of that, man, we're going to figure it out. I'm Man. confident we can figure it out, Man, right? Bro. Yeah, bro. I, I mean, and I don't want to take too much time on this, but I think this is important. I think, I think people need to hear it in this segment, man. John, so let's say I called into your show, okay? We're, we're on the Dave Ramsey show right now, but let's flip it to the Dr. John Deloney show for the next two minutes. Mm -hmm. I call into your show, Dr. John Deloney. I have some friends that, some people that I, that I, that I like, but I don't agree with half of their stuff. And every time we get into the room, we're mm -hmm. arguing. What should I do to go into this relationship and we're not arguing because we disagree? What are some key things I should be doing? I th one, I think you approach those, you approach people in your life with dignity and respect first, yes. not ideation first. Ooh, that's good. Does that make sense? Yeah, y'all need to write that down. And so I'm going to sit down at a table with folks with one chief objective to yeah. let you know you are seen. And you have value as a person. Thank you. Right? Yes. That's number one. Good. Number two, when I do that, mm -hmm. we have anchored in to a common place of, of respect and dignity. Then I can tell you, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard in my <laughs> life. Right? And you can hear it. Because you know, I don't hate you. I think that's a dumb idea. Yes. And now we can have some fun, man. Now we can get into some good tussling. I used to do MMA. I love sparring hard. Yes. And then I love the high five at the end when I know we both gave it our all, but we both went into that engagement knowing, all right, I respect this dude. Now we're going to let it fly. There we go. And when it's over, it's over. It's over. And then we're going to go get dinner. Man. <laughs> America, find people that you disagree with, love them, and then get after it. This is the Dave Ramsey Show.
888-825-5225. This is the Dave Ramsey Show, and we are taking your calls on life and money. I'm John Deloney, my good friend Anthony O'Neill. Let's go to Jenny in Charlotte, North Carolina. Jenny, what's going on? How can we help? Hey, gentlemen, I'm big fans of you both. And, Anthony, your interview with Matthew McConaughey, woo, that was awesome. I uh, loved it. Oh, man, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, hey, I have a question for you guys. Not technically money-related, but I think you guys can help. So I'm from a divorced family. My parents got divorced when I was six. My dad was a wealthy businessman. My mom was pretty absent, so we were raised by another family. Um, so needless to say, my relationship with my mother is not – really close. I'm 35 and have two little girls now. And I think just disappointed in myself this last year, um, you know, not sticking to things, not having self-discipline. So after the first of the year, I decided to join this free program called 75 Hard. I don't know if you've heard of it. Yeah, 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 I've heard of it. For 70, yeah, it's awesome. Um, life-changing so far. And um, for 75 days, you have to do five things per day. Mm-hmm. One of the things is you have to pick a diet and stick to it and no cheat meals and no alcohol for 75 days. Yeah. And so one of the I, – I picked a low-carb diet, and also I decided to fast a couple days a week. Mm-hmm. Well, the second I put that on my Instagram stories, my mother, who I said I'm not very close with, just nailed me via text. Not actually in a conversation. She lives in Ohio, and I'm in North Carolina. And – saying, this is ridiculous, you're so, you're being crazy, you're so unhealthy, I'm not coming to visit you or my grandkids until you're off this program, just really laying into me day after day for about four days, and I was just trying to send her the science, send her some, you know, good articles, good YouTube videos regarding fasting, and she's kind of just trying to, you know, control me in a way, but I finally, I didn't say anything rude, but I finally just said, Mom, your concern is duly noted. She hasn't talked to me since, and it's been about two weeks, and I don't want to avoid her, but I feel like she's just not mature as a grandmother, as a parent. I just I just don't know where to go from here. We've had issues in the past where I've felt like I've been the parent, and she's just pretty immature. I, what would you guys say that I should do regarding this issue? Uh, <laughs> She doesn't get a vote, man. If you choose to do somersaults for 75 days in a row, she doesn't get a vote. If you choose to be vegan or keto or whatever you want to do, she doesn't get a vote. And if the if your relationship with your mom is contingent on her agreeing with everything that you are doing to the point that she is going to weaponize herself, her presence, she's not going to be in relationship with you until you're done with this um, diet and this reset and this um, practice of self-discipline so that you can become a better mom and friend and wife and all those things. If she weaponizes herself in that way, then she is giving you some very loud and clear signals about the status of your relationship, which means mm-hmm. you have to do the hard work of not pursuing her approval and everything, not pursuing, uh, not catering to that sort of... Um, weaponization of a relationship and you did it right duly noted thanks for it if that's the case i'll see you in 76 days and i'm moving on with my life and i and listen what i just said is a lot easier to do intellectually than it is emotionally i will tell you this mm-hmm. nobody in an emotional state gets cured of that emotional state with data they get healthy through relationships. So when somebody reaches out to you and says, you're insane, you're crazy, how dare you exercise every day and change your diet and stop drinking alcohol and do intermittent fasting and your response is science, then you've just declared – you've responded to their declaration of war with guns and machine gun fire. When somebody responds mm-hmm. to you in that way, you say, hey, thank you so much. I appreciate your, your, uh, your note. And that's all I'm going to respond. Helpful, just it's hard. It's, it's here. I hear the silence, yeah. right? Tell me, tell me what you're feeling when I yeah. tell you that. Yeah, it's just uh, yeah, like I said, we've had issues in the past where I don't know if she's diagnosed, uh, undiagnosed bipolar. Hold on, hold on, Jenny. I, I, Jenny, Jenny, kind of a, Jenny. I don't care about any diagnosis. I don't care about any of that oh. stuff. What my guess is, for years, she has weaponized her presence to get you to do yeah, things yeah. that she wanted her, she wanted you to do. Yeah. And what I want yeah, to tell you is don't let her. And, and her being a grandmother now, and, and I have a two year old and a four year old. It's just, 
hurtful and also frustrating. It is. And you, she likes to make me feel like I'm crazy. That's right. It's really frustrating. And gaslighting is the worst, and you've got to let that fantasy go. You had a picture of your mom as this uber grandmother, more so that she was never this mom. But you had a picture of her becoming this grandmother, and more so that your kids were going to get to experience this incredible grandmother relationship, and it was going to be warm and fuzzy. She was going to show up and buy him stuff and laugh, and the reality is that's not going to happen. And that hurts to process that and to grieve that. But when you process it, when you admit it, when you grieve it, then you can start healing from it, and you can unhitch yourself from it. You can love your mom for who she is. And then you can go be in relationship with folks who are going to be affirming, who are going to laugh with you. They're going to poke fun at your 75 hard, but they're going to cheer you on too. You know what I'm saying? What do you think, Anthony? No, nah, you're hitting it right on the head, man. I have nothing else to say. You're hitting it dead on the head. Yeah. And, and here's the thing, man. There is no uh, – there is – there are few harder truths than finding out your parents aren't the people that we wanted them to be. Mm-hmm. It sucks. And it's especially hard when you have kids mm-hmm. and they're not going to be the grandparents because your kids deserve a great-grandparents. Right? Awesome grandparents, connected grandparents, ones that aren't going to um, suspend their love over you like that. But it sinks me. I'm sorry, Jenny, but once you unhook from that, man, you can be free. Let's go to Scott in Charlotte in North Carolina. Uh, Scott, what's going on, man? Oh, I just went to Scott in Sacramento. I'm so sorry. There's a couple of Scots on the board. We'll go to Scott in Sacramento, and then I'll circle back to Scott in Charlotte. What's up, Scott? Oh, man. Okay, so I, I think I just made my wife very happy because I just shaved my massive beard off, and I think she's quite pleased now. So I took one for the team. Hey, for a guy that has been trying to – I have not shaved in 11 years, and if you're watching YouTube, you can see I've got no – I have I can't grow a beard. <laughs> Anthony can. So good for you, man. So what's up? Okay, so we are – my wife wants to start a small business selling um, jewelry and other – kinds of decor items and we are i think we just don't know what we don't know about starting the business and taxes so my question is one what do i need to figure out what do we need to figure out for taxes so that we don't make a mistake and two how do we know when to put money into the business and when you take it out to pay yourself and that kind of thing well, here's the thing. When it comes to the taxes, you actually need to sit down with a uh, professional accountant that can really nail down exactly what you need to be doing as far as the income have, income that you have coming in. And so uh, it really be hard for us to give you the specifics because when you ask this kind of question, I want to make sure that we're not just answering it in a general way. We're setting you up with a pro that can honestly sit down and tell you what to be doing uh, as far as in which your taxes. So I would definitely go to DaveRamsey.com, look for an accountant uh, that we, we endorse and sit down with them and get that information then number two was you said how much money should we be investing back into the company is that was that your second question uh, yeah well I, I i know i my understanding is that i should set up a separate account uh, a separate checking account for the business absolutely and then i know that i want to use money we want to use money to buy more materials and that kind of thing i just don't know how much to put in and how much to say this is our profit we're gonna give put it into our personal checking account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I I think what you got to do is figure out how much are you paying yourself? All right. Uh, what are you paying yourself for salary? Uh, so there's going to be like three questions. Number one is, what are you paying in the taxes? You know, some people will say you need to take 30 percent off top when you get when you get the check in. And then number two is, what are you paying yourself as far as in salary? And then that would determine what money do you have going back into the company to purchase materials and stuff like that. So the very first thing is to identify how much money do you have coming in? Sit down with an account rep or with an account executive that can sit down and tell you, hey, here's how much taxes you need to be setting aside. Then also decide, okay, great, here's my salary, and then boom, here's the rest that we have going back into the company.
This is the Dave Ramsey Show. I'm John Deloney with Anthony O'Neill. We're taking your calls on life and money at 888-825-5225. Blinds.com. Find out yourself why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window covering. You get free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Use promo code RAMSEY to get the best deal. Rules and restrictions apply. Today's question comes from Christy in Georgia and Anthony. I pre-read this one. I already know, man. Christy writes, My husband and I got married last Friday. We decided on separate bank accounts. He and I have both been married before, and he was burned pretty bad by his ex. I make 50000 per year. I have no idea what he makes, but we split household bills down the middle. We both believe in your program and are dedicated to being financially free, but I'm not. I'm just not sure if we're going about this the right way. Would you help me understand if this is indeed 50-50? I'll paper, rock, scissor you to see who goes first, Anthony. <laughs> hey, I already talked about being empathetic, so... Why don't you go, Anthony? Uh, straightforward answer, no. You're not going about this the right way. A couple should not have two separate bank accounts. A couple should not know, well, should not be in a position to where they do not know what the other person is making. How is it that you're married and you do not know how much money your husband makes, but you just know that you all split half of the bills? So I'm going to play devil's advocate. Uh, I, no, we ain't got time for devil's advocate. No, 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 because I'm, I'm pretending I'm driving down the street. Somebody just responded, uh-uh, I got burned, and I'm not doing that again. Okay, you got burned. He'll move on. If you want to do it the right way, you got to do it the right way. Okay? Well, how can two become one in a marriage when everything is still two? You're, you didn't become one. Y'all just roommates. Okay? Studies are showing that when you come together and you genuinely come in together and say, you know, we're going to do this together. Have a clear conversation. Hey, I was burned. I was, I was, I had some issues. Cool. You should have talked about it in the beginning of the marriage. Y'all maybe should have did a prenup. Okay. I mean, there's so many different things that you can do, but you cannot be married and not know what your husband is making and not know what your wife is making, not really have a joint conversation every month saying, Hey, here's how much money we have. Here's how we're going to build wealth. Here's how we're going to live a legacy. What you going to say? Hey, make sure you put 50% set aside for school. No, you're a married couple. And you over here saying you do this. I do this. No, it's we do this when two or three gather he didn't say when one when two or three come in the midst there's power when there is unity there's no power when it's separate there's power when there's unity so no you're doing it the wrong way now you can be soft and i am <laughs> say your stuff bro i was gonna i was coming back harder but i was i won't even do that i'm a thousand percent here's the thing if you were hurt before in a previous relationship and you are hurt in a way that is that hurt is ongoing don't get married you have no business getting married to somebody else if you are not fully all in on this new marriage right so i know you got burned pretty bad and i'm sorry that you got burned pretty bad. i hate that for you yeah then don't get married because right. the solution is not to hitch yourself to somebody sort of Right. It's yeah. not to anchor. You don't want to, you know, you uh, you do a bungee jump. Right. And uh, man, you got scared on that bungee jump. You got hurt on that bungee jump. They didn't wrap it on right or whatever. If you decide to get back up there and jump again, you can't have a secret little leash where you tie yourself to the to the bridge because right. you're going to break your back. Right. If you're going to get back up there and jump, you got to get back up there and jump. Christy, you all both need to sit down. ASAP, put all your cards on the table. Here's how much money we have. Here's how much money I make. We're going to get one checking account. We're going to work on this together. We're going to heal together. He needs to be honest about how much he's hurt. And then y'all got to work. Y'all got to come together on this deal. Um, look at you and me agreeing, Anthony. It's a new day in America. All nice. right, let's go to Scott in Charlotte, North Carolina. The right Scott. What's going on, brother? How can we help? Not much. How are you gentlemen doing today? outstanding man so what's up glad glad to hear it well so um you got your pens ready always for you always okay so good deal good deal so started a business about two years ago um uh, ended up selling it about a month ago and that company that bought my company actually gave me a job 
So I'm working for them now. Household income is about 80 right now, should be moving up to 110 next year. No car payments, no credit cards. Um, we owe $58,000 on our house. We have a student loan of 61000 and I have $70,000 from the sale of the company. And working the baby steps, would I not pay whoa, the whoa, house whoa. Off Say it again. You got $58,000 in what, what, Scott? Mortgage. Um, we, we have mortgage. 58 thousand in mortgage yeah and i have uh seventy thousand cash that's including emergency fund cash and how many student loans one and it's 61 geez you have <laughs> wow okay All what's, right. what's yeah. the business scott um i own a tree service I've, I've kept trees for a long time doing it part-time and anybody calls in i would say do your business part-time before you jump in full-time there you go you know, a uh, word to the wise, and don't take anything out you don't have to mm. until you're making money. I love it. Um, so we just dumped everything back into it, and two years later, got an offer on it, mm. um, and they paid me well for it. Mm -hmm. Very mm -hmm. cool. So how can we help, man? So What's your question? Debt, my question is, if I work the debt snowball, my house is actually less than student loans. Absolutely. So I could write a check today and no. pay my house off no but i'm still left with sixty one thousand student loans right yeah so uh, baby step two is pay off all of your debt excluding your mortgage okay the house. okay yes excluding your mortgage because your house is actually generating money for you so we don't mind that sitting there for a little while longer while you eliminate this stu these student loans now i'm pretty sure these are all federal or any of these private uh, no, they're all, they're, I believe they're all federal. All right, so right now you want to attack these student loans because you're not, you're not accumulating any interest right now because the government has pushed that off for a little bit of time. So your best bet Correct. is to go in ahead and get rid of the 61K. If you have $70,000 cash, I'm hanging up the phone from us within the next 30 seconds and I'm cutting a check for 61K to pay off this. Then now you are extremely debt free. You still have $9,000 in emergency fund you're making eighty thousand dollars a year right now and then boom i'm gonna get back and build up uh, of three months three to six months of my emergency fund i'm gonna start investing and then i'm gonna attack that mortgage okay but okay can i ask you one more thing sure thing okay appreciate it uh, i'm 37 my wife is 33 okay uh both in good solid careers yep. and we have 80k and 401k no don't um, touch it. are we you, I know we need to stop investing, but do you think we are on track to 30, get to the point where we will have? So, so let me let me tell you this: Are you behind right now? Yes. Okay, I'm 36 years old and I have okay. more money in my account with that. But just because. You, actually, you and I are behind. I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to be real on the Dave Ramsey show. I didn't start investing until I got out of debt, okay? But here's the thing. One of our good friends, Chris Hogan, says age is not a a, a, a number. It's a re it's like it's a – well, no, he says it's age. It's not an age. It's, age it's a is, number. Yeah, retirement is not an age. It's a financial number. So for you is once you get 100% debt-free, what I want you to do is go to chrishogan360.com and then just start uh, mm -hmm. just getting all his content because – once you become debt free in your thirties, you are ahead of the game. And then now you're gonna start investing fifteen percent. You and I both are not just gonna catch up, we're gonna surpass our age bracket when we get into the fifties. So trust me, get this sixty one K paid off, you got seventy K cash. Pay that student loans off. Get your three to six months back up and running. Then you need to go over there and rock with Chris Hogan so you can learn how to get this 15% invested ASAP, okay? Max out your 401Ks. Max out your Roth IRAs. And I guarantee you, you'll be an everyday millionaire within the next 10 to 15 years. It's been a great hour. I want I want him to pay off his debts and then call us back in another hour and do the debt-free screen. That's how awesome today's going to be. We've got an hour in the books. we got more to come. Stay with us. This has been The Dave Ramsey Show.
Welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, this is the Dave Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. Sitting in for Dave, I'm John Deloney, joined with my good friend and best-selling author, Anthony O'Neill. We are taking your calls on life and money and everything in between. Anthony, how are we doing? I'm doing well, man. Excellent, excellent, <laughs> excellent. Oh, Let's man. go. You know what? Before we go to the phones, Anthony, how's your podcast doing, my man? It's doing great, bro. Who are you? You're funny right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it's doing good, man. I, I'm grateful for um, uh, just everything that it's doing, man. So we can talk about it, man. I want to get to the phone lines. Let's go there. Uh, all right. All right. Let's go to Shanley in Honolulu, <laughs> Hawaii. Shanley, how are we doing? Happy Aloha Friday. And also with you. I'm doing good. Good, good, good. <laughs> how can we help? Um. Okay, uh, real quick, just a little background. My husband and I um, were married. I am four months, four months pregnant with my first child or our first child. Um, we haven't started the baby steps yet for Dave Ramsey, so we're not on the program just yet. But I follow Dave Ramsey on Instagram. I watch his videos. and So I have, like, the general knowledge of his program. Mm-hmm. Um, my husband and I, we, we do agree on one thing that we, we need to get out of debt and amen to you, you guys earlier with um, the Christie answer to Christie about we share our debt and we share our income. So good for you. We, we agree on that too. Yeah. <laughs> but um, we also just come from different backgrounds. So we kind of see money differently mm-hmm. and we spend it differently and have different ideas of how we save it as well. But we, we know we need to get out of debt like as soon as possible. Um, so I was trying to think like you guys and get all my questions answered, thinking like Dave and Chris Hogan and Ao and all you guys. And the only question I, not only, but kind of one of the big things that stood out that I need help with before we get started in the program is my husband. Um, he resells shoes. So he's like in the shoe game. Kind of hacking. I don't know if you guys know what that is. Absolutely. You know, I know what that is. Yeah, he's on the apps. It's also a hobby. Like, he loves to do it. He loves shoes, Nike shoes, Adidas, all that. Okay. Um, but he likes to buy and resell them. Okay. Um, he uses credit cards oh. often. And I know Dave Ramsey program oh. is, is anti-credit cards. Mm-hmm. I'm a little more pro debit card or checking account. I feel better using money. I know I have, Mm -hmm. um, but he, he likes to use the credit cards because he gets cash back as well. Mm. You know, we, we have like rocket 10, we get cash back. Um, but I just don't know how his shoes like reselling fits into the program. If we did get started and we just have a lot of debt that I'm like, we, I just need to get started already before we have a child and just more debt and all of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. you're absolutely right. And I, and I would love to have a conversation with your husband. Um, I, I wish he was there. Um, is he there? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Put him on. He's right next to me. Yeah. Put him on. Put, put oh, us on here. speakerphone. So, he uh, made he you call. You Come on, team. man. Well, I'm the one that's like, I want to do the program. Uh, yeah. He's not anti Dave Ramsey, but yeah, I he's you. also like, he wants to understand it and have a clear path before we get started. That's good. Yeah. I'm, I'm not so, going to talk to him about the shoes. I want to talk to both of y'all. Put him on speakerphone. Let okay. me know. Let me know when y'all um, on speakerphone. Okay, we're on speaker. Okay, what's y'all's last name? Uh, last name is Angamoa. Okay. Samoan. Samoan. So I'm, Sorry, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna say yeah, brother and yeah, sister yeah. then for right now. All right. <laughs> Uh, here's the thing, man. I'm not even going to talk to you about your business. I want to talk to you about you two being on one accord. Okay. I think that you two, if you're going to say, Hey, we're going to get out of debt. You can't build debt. If you're racking up other debt. Okay. You can't, you can't get out of credit card debt. You can't get out of bill debt. If you're racking up other debt, even for the business. So I think before we can address the business side of things, bruh, I think you and your wife need to get on the same page. Bay, is our end goal to be 100% debt free? 
If that's mm-hmm, our mm-hmm. end goal, then we both on both sides are going to work towards that end goal. And that end goal means we can't have credit cards because we want credit card points and we want reward points. Because what's going to happen, mm-hmm. bro? I'm going to be real with you on, 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 as a brother to brother. OK, yes, sir. Uh, something's going to come up. That's not an emergency. What you're going to do is put it on the credit card because it's convenient. So what I want you to do um, is before you cut up anything, because this ain't about cutting up. I want you and your wife to get on the same page. When you two get on the same page, then backtrack that. All right. What are the steps we need to be doing to get to that goal? And if that goal is to be 100 percent debt free, you need to cut up all your credit cards, still run your business. Because I know you can make money flipping shoes. I'm with Mm -hmm. you in that part. But how do we cash flow that and build cash from there? You know, so I, yes, I was yes, I, yes. I'm, I'm not coming for you because you're the man of the house. I respect the king of the house. I'm just saying I as. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah. As the king of the house, just make sure that you and the queen come together on the same message and y'all go after the same goals, man. So here's what I'm going to do yeah, for yeah. you. OK, I'm going okay. to give you two things. One, because I like giving away my stuff, and two, because I like giving away other people's stuff. Just don't give away my stuff. Not going to give away Anthony's stuff. Not going to do that. He charges me for it, guys. It's just the way he, he rolls. Okay, okay. All, All right. So the first thing is, when's your baby due? July. July. All right. July. All right. Oh, yes. So I'm going to give you guys a ticket to the digital date night, the money in marriage event that's coming up with me and my good friend, Rachel Cruz, Dave Ramsey's daughter on February 12th. And we're going to send you a, it's, you're going to be able to have this date on your own couch. You're going to prop your feet up and we are going to walk you through some things that are challenging couples and marriages across, across the world right now. The last year and a half has been a zoo and how y'all can come together practically with your money right now. Mm-hmm. And the second thing I'm going to give you, because uh, I love you and I've got faith in you. Are you all in? Thank you. Yeah. Tell yeah, me you're yes, all in. Yes, all right. Sir. I'm going to give you a year subscription. A whole year? A year subscription. Oh, you good today, bro. To Ramsey Plus, okay. which is all of the Financial Peace University, mm. all of the videos. Y'all are going to watch them together. You're not going to just oh. sit there. You're going to do it oh. together. And it's going to be come with a year's uh, su- uh, subscription to the Every Dollar app. Mm. So y'all can be together in what? your finances. No hiding, no cheating, no nothing. You're going to be together. And <laughs> yes, listen. Sir. You're going to work real hard together, yeah. coming together. You're going to build a marriage that no one around you has. You're going to be the light on a hill for your friends who are married. And that baby's going to come into yeah, a marriage man. of peace mm. where y'all get to laugh. Yeah. Y'all get to play. Y'all get to be silly. And you're not going to be pacing the, the floors every night wondering how we're going to pay our bills. Yes, okay? Mm. Are you wow. all in? Wow. Amen. Thank you so much. Yes, we're sir. all yes, in. Yes. I want to be that person with the board that says, we're going to free you with, with our money and there's wow, two, thank you so two, much. two people you between you and that goal, and it's y'all too. Yep. Okay? Those yes, decisions okay. start right. together, they start united, and they start today. See, couples like that, you hear them, and oh, yeah, let's go. Wow, what? Huh? Yeah, I want to be that person. That's who we want calling in to the Dave Ramsey Show. Um, I'm, we, the whole family tree is about to be different. About to be different. Because these two are going to stand up and do it different. I'm proud of them. You have a good awesome. heart, John. Huh? You have a good heart, man. I just like giving away Dave's stuff. I see. Triple eight eight two five five two two five. Give us a shout. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. Cliff and I joined Christian Healthcare Ministries because we really liked the concept of. Uh, Christians sharing each other's burdens. And we really experienced that firsthand when Cliff was diagnosed with heart disease. It was just such a relief to know that financial burden was going to be taken care of. CHM is the original and longest serving health cost sharing ministry. Get started today and check us out at chministries.org.
This is the Dave Ramsey Show. I'm John Deloney with my good friend Anthony O'Neill. Give us a shout at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Talking about life and money. When it comes to making big life changes like buying a home, getting married, having a baby, the last thing on your mind is making sure you have, drum roll please, the right insurance coverage. I get it. Big changes are overwhelming, but what would be even more overwhelming is to find yourself in debt because you and your family weren't properly covered. If not having the time or energy is what's keeping you from getting the right insurance coverage, use one of our endorsed local provider or ELP insurance agents to help. ELPs are independent agents who find you the best coverage at the best price free of charge. That's right. An independent agent shops a variety of insurance options, finds you the best, and explains all the technical lingo so you know exactly what you're getting for free. Text insurance to 33789 to get connected with an ELP and let a pro help you find the coverage that fits your life. That's insurance to 33789. Nine. All right, let's go to Jonah in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Jonah, what's going on? How can I help? Hi, thank you for taking my call. Um, can you hear me all right? Absolutely, man. What's going on? Perfect. Perfect. So I am receiving um, about $20,000 from my grandmother uh, here soon. Thankfully, she has been saving for me since I was born. So very grateful for that. Mm-hmm. Um Right now, I have about three thousand dollars in credit card debt, um, and then uh, so I've actually I've grown a portfolio about one hundred fifty percent. I have about ten thousand dollars in that account, but I've kind of done it in a way that I'm not too proud of. I actually don't have any emergency funds right now, um, so all of my like, cash I don't have any cash actually. So. I want to, my goal is essentially to be financially free. Uh, and I want to, I want to make sure I do this right um, because I don't necessarily have the most uh, job security. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to kind of do what I can with what I have. How old are you, Jonah? Um, so you me, I will be 25 in March. Okay, 25 years old. And, okay, you get an inheritance and check I have for 20000 I have a fiancé and one son as well. You have a fiancé as well? And a son. We have a 16 month. Okay. And you have a son um, as well. Mm-hmm. All right. Sounds good. So you're 25. Uh, you're about to get married. You have one son. And you are uh, $3,000 in debt. And I think you said you built a portfolio of how much? Uh, it's that 10000 written now. Okay, cool. And then you have a $20,000 check coming in. Okay, so I'm not really worried about the inheritance check right now. I want to talk to you about what are you doing as far as in creating a solid foundation for you? What are you doing as far as in a career right now at 25? So currently I have a 95 job at a pizza place. Um, I graduated with a photography degree. Um, I'm working towards going to grad school. Um, with that specifically, I would like to teach. As a professor, um, aside from that, um, you know, I've been applying actually for a couple of years, and I've had no luck okay. so far. But um, so in the meantime, we are here. Um, I'm actually in, in, in Morgan County, West Virginia. We are trying to uh, set up a community resource center here, uh, focused on arts and kind of operate as cooperative for creatives and all sorts of uh, people, and just providing opportunities to. Got you. Okay, cool. Great. Here's the very first thing I will tell you, man. When you get this inheritance check, I will go ahead and pay off all your credit card debt. All right. Um, and then when it comes to your uh, your portfolio that you're building, you're not really in a place yet to be to be investing. Uh, because you don't have a job, a stable job right now. And so for me, I will be focused on getting you a stable job with stable income, especially with you about to be a the provider for a family. You have a wife and a kid uh, that's about to, you know, be move, about to move in with you. Um, and I, I'm looking for a job and and I'm even looking at, OK, is school right for me right now? OK, uh, that's the kind of questions that I'm asking myself. I'm, what I'm doing is I'm stepping back and I'm looking at 
the next 20 years of my life? Where do I want to be when I turn 45 years old? And how do I get there? Do I want to be a good father? Do I want to be a good wife? Well, not a good wife, a good father and a good uh, husband. Uh, do I want to have a solid job? And, and once you answer all these questions, then John, he needs to work backwards right now. I mean, but you got this twenty thousand dollars. That's great. Pay off your debt. Then what I would do is set aside the rest of that money so you can cash flow your wedding uh, that that you have coming up. And honestly, man, I, I'm not, I'm not spending no more than two to three thousand dollars for my wedding. This is a you don't have the money yeah. for a big wedding. Yeah, knock it out, get it done. You need an emergency fund. You got a little one. You got to have some cash in the bank. And then, you, like Anthony said, you got to start hustling. I know you have a dream of being a professor. That's a hard job these days. They're getting rarer and rarer to come by. What I don't want you to do is go to grad school with this dream that's going to come true seven years from now. Get a, one job, two job, three jobs, and Pretty start much. socking some money away, man. Good stuff. Good deal. Let's go to Andrew in Houston. Andrew, how can I help, man? Hey, thanks for having me. Um, so, a quick backstory. Um, been a huge fan of you all y'all for a while now. Um, took the, uh, the, the debt free freedom class nine years ago, got married nine years ago, nice. was making $15 an hour. Um, didn't know anything about money. And after I took that class, uh, started working towards just understanding money. And now nine years later, I'm making over a hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, my house is paid off. My cars are paid off. I've yeah. Got zero Way to go, man. <laughs> it's been a journey, but got there. Now, you know, my question is I've got 80 grand in the bank. Um, I don't want to buy a new car. I feel like that's a waste of money at this point in my life. Okay. Um, I want to invest. I'm okay. thinking real estate. I'm trying to stay away from stocks, but I wanted to hear from you guys, see what you thought. Yeah, talk to us, man. What do you have invested right now? Are you doing like a 401k? I don't have a 401k. I do have company stocks uh, that best every year. Okay. Um, but no, nothing, nothing other than that. Do you have a Roth IRA? I do not. Okay, cool. So that's where we're going to start. That's going to be the foundation. Um, you have $80,000 in a bank. What I'm going to do, I'm going to hang up the phone for myself. I'm going to call um, a Smart Vesta Pro. I'm going to let them know that, hey, um, I want to invest. Now, before we ask this, eighty thousand dollars in the bank, your household income is about a hundred, so that means you need about twenty-five k uh, for an emergency fund. All right, so we're going to take that at sixty. So you're going to have fifty-five thousand dollars that you can invest. All right. What I'm going to do here is the very first thing. I'm going to go into my office tomorrow. I'm going to see, hey, if I can start in, uh, opening up, investing into a four hundred one k. Do y'all do y'all have a traditional or a Roth four hundred one k there? Uh, I haven't even looked into it, to be honest with you. I'm not cool. sure. Cool. That's what I'm going to look into. I'm going to look in and see um, if they have it. So when it comes to investing, it's three things, uh, Andrew. Number one is going to be a match. We always look for how we can get the match. Number two is going to be a Roth. Number three is going to be traditional. Okay. So if your company has a match, I want you to invest up until that match. Then you're going to go over and invest into a Roth IRA. OK, so as soon as you hang up the phone, you have fifty five thousand dollars that you can invest. Call an investor. Let the investor know, hey, I got money, cash money, real money, fifty five thousand dollars in real cash money that I want to invest. What should I do? The very first thing you gonna invest into is a Roth IRA. Make sure that, that they uh, get invested into a growth stock mutual fund and then you can open up other mutual funds or you can leave that there and then stack that money to now get into real estate. But right now you want compound interest working into your favor. Once you have that all situated, then yes, we can start looking into real estate. We can start looking into land. Uh, but right now, let's do the foundation so you know for sure you have some compound interest and matches working on your side. Then you can call us back. And I would say call back and holler at Dave because Dave is the king when it comes to real estate, man. And Andrew, I heard it in your voice. You're right. It's not sexy. There's not going to be fireworks. It's not as cool as going to buy a rent house. Or taking out a mortgage on a rent house. Slow and steady. You've done it over nine years. Now you are making a phone call that says, I've got no mortgage and 80 grand in the bank. You're doing things that nobody does. Keep taking the small steps. The tortoise wins every time. Yeah. Good for you, Andrew. 888-825-5225. Give us a shout. This is The Dave Ramsey Show.
This is the Dave Ramsey Show. I'm John Deloney with my good friend, Anthony O'Neill. And I'm excited that there are two beautiful people standing on the debt-free stage here in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions, David and Sonia from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. How are we doing? We're doing great. We are good. We're glad to be here. So you are debt-free. We are. That is correct. Outstanding. All right. So how much have you paid off? We paid off $132,131 in five years and one month. Five years? Oh, you, this is a grinding one, right? <laughs> yep. Y'all grind out. What was your range of income during this time? Uh, we started off at 62000 and we ended at 150000 Woo! Why the jump? How, yeah. How'd you do that? Um changing jobs and then she was out of the workforce workforce for a few years with our three kids at home and then she got back into the workforce again so david was this 132 131 was that student loans uh yes. that was student loans medical car and our house you paid off your house we yes. did you weirdos. are crazy weirdos yes. fantastic how, how old are you two I am 34. I just turned 33 this week. Y'all are millennials. Yes. yes. With a paid needs- for house. Yes. yes. See, Dave should be here today. <laughs> Tell me why. <laughs> because, you know, he needs to see millennials doing this. Nope. We're going to take it all for ourselves. <laughs> this is awesome, David and Sonia. All right. So take me back five plus years ago. Something rattled the cage that set you on this journey. What was it? Um, we took FBU, uh, September, 2014. At that time we had a six month old and we had an 18 month old. We had two kids 12 months apart. So we had two kids in diapers. We had one on formula. The fact that you can remember a date from that time is remarkable. (laughs) (laughs) Oh yes. It was crazy times. Okay. So at that time I was teaching. David was working at a different job at the time. I was working, uh, as a CNC programmer. Wow. Excellent. I thought yeah. you were going to say CNC Music Factory. Okay. And so then what happened? <laughs> um, it just was one of those things where I think every time I came home from Target, I think his blood pressure went up a little bit more every time. Yep. And quite honestly, I wasn't spending crazy money on foolish things. Like I was paying for diapers and I was paying for formula and, you know, laundry detergent, things like that. And he was just like... I mean, he was just stressed out, and I didn't like to see him that way, and he kind of brought it to my attention. He's like, I think we should do this class, and I'm like, what do you mean? Like, what kind of class are you talking about? And he's like, oh, it's called Financial Peace University, and I'm like, oh, and he was kind of discussing it, and he's like, there's one actually in our area, and, you know, it'd be once a week. You know, for eight weeks, they had like childcare included, so like and we could drop like, the kids I'm all off. In. I'm all in. I know. I Which was, was super very excited. <laughs> yes, yes so. it was very helpful because yeah, we had two young kids at the time. Yeah. So, who, so who introduced you to the program? Um, I actually found Dave on the radio when I was traveling back and forth from my technical school. Okay. Okay. So, so put me in your driving. Yes. You start imagining this conversation that you're going to bring up to a working mother of two half people and you're thinking all right how am i going to do this how am i going to do this <laughs> yes. walk me through that moment of courage when you said hey what if you uh, what about this um i i do not remember that what's you blacked out well yeah. played so long ago well played yeah. excellent <laughs> so what was the key thing to getting out of debt i mean cuz this is a lot of money that you all paid off um, and it was a long time. Long time. Yeah. It was. It was. Um, like I said, when we first started, we had the two kids. Um, I was a teacher for a couple years. Um, I went down to part time, and then we found out we were expecting again. Mm. Yep. So we, at that time, I was teaching part time, and we knew when our third child came along, it's like, you know, was it really a point of me working when we are going to have three kids under the age of three Mm. in daycare? Wow. So that was the time when I decided to step away from teaching and to stay home. And it was very much an adjustment. Um, Very much where I love teaching. I love children. But it was just one of those factors where something just had to give. So I did. I stayed home for probably three, four years. Four years, probably. and yeah um yeah because yeah, it was helpful for us that um our that we had about thirty thousand worth of just um non-mortgage debt that 
after we had our third son or our third kid, um, sh- we were able to pay off that debt completely at that point. Wow. So. Awesome. Wow. Yeah. So that was the beginning of October mm-hmm. uh, 2015 that we were debt free. And for a while, we were just kind of, you know, going along, going casually. along. And then like my income sort of kept kept growing. And I'm like, what do you think about trying to pay off the house Uh-oh. pretty quickly here? And I have to give her a lot of credit. Like the last year, she was anything and anything. We're, we were just going to throw it at the debt. We're throwing it at the house. We're throwing it at the house nonstop. Wow. I think every time, like he came home and he's like, oh, were you coloring on our chart again? I'm like, yeah, I just threw another $5,000 at the debt. And he'd be like, yep. oh, it, kinda <laughs> helps, it helps that David does not spend literally any money. Oh. Like he's just very, like, I'm he doesn't, with what I yeah, have. it's like he That's doesn't need awesome. anything. He's very. Yeah, happy. So, so how old are your kids now? Um, our oldest just turned eight this week. Okay. Um, our daughter will be seven in, in a weeks. week or yeah. two. Yeah, and then we have a five-year-old. So wow. tell me, tell everybody in in just one sentence. You've changed the entire trajectory of their childhood. They're not going to know that stress. They're not right. going to know that gritting teeth moment. That. What does that mean to you? I mean, it's awesome. When we were doing this, you know, they were little. They had no idea what they were missing out on. And honestly, I really don't think they were missing out on anything. You know, I felt like we were very normal. normal Like, I don't feel like we were, you know, We just didn't do anything very extravagant or anything. Yeah. I mean, we just, we live pretty simple lives. We're not very extravagant. Um you know some of our friends and were kind of following us you know as we were paying off our house and Mm -hmm. um they're like i just feel like you're like normal people like you go you're not not normal anymore (laughs) right you're not not normal anymore (laughs) david and sonia from fond du lac wisconsin paid off a hundred and thirty two thousand dollars in five years making 62 to 150 thousand dollars with three kids Count it down for us. Three, Three two, two, one. one. We're death free! <laughs> Anthony, have you ever grinded something out? I don't even grind it out is the right word for five years to change everything. I mean, I have, but to hear other people do that specifically for them, you know, in the process of raising three small kids, uh, she wasn't working and they was like, yo, we're just going to go gazelle intense. And I love how they kept the same gazelle intense from paying off their consumer debt and flipped that over to their mortgage. And so now that it's a young couple younger than you and I. Yeah do not have a mortgage payment. So when they wake up and they see their kids and their kids say, mom and dad, can we go to Disney World? They can say yes. And if they're saying no, it's just because they don't want to go, not because they can't afford it. So all of the, they said so many things that are different and countercultural. They said things like, we're just simple people and we like hanging out with each other. Yeah. We just decided to pay our house off. We just decided I'm going to stay at home because... I want to, right? Right. All these options and choices they made that fly in their face of, you can only be happy if you have more crap. The more stuff you own, the happier you are, right? The bigger the house, the more, the more, the more. They just said, uh-uh. Listen to this, man. They started off making $62,000. That's a lot of money to some, but that's really not a lot of money. Right. Okay? And they said, you know what? We're just going to be good stewards of the resources that we have right now, and we're going to attack this debt. And I believe it's because they were good stewards with this little bit. Just the spiritual side of me saying this, God trusted them with more. And look, flipped their money. Not just flipped it, but doubled it to 150 Changing their whole trajectory of their family tree and i loved what you said your friends are starting to say huh you don't look like people who have a paid off house y'all are just regular old folks yeah started on the bottom now they dead free on top (laughs) and we think paying off your house comes from scratching a ticket or from money falling off a tree it just comes from hard work day after day after day you two dave and sonia are free Congratulations, inspiring millions right here on the Dave Ramsey Show.
is the Dave Ramsey Show, 888-825-5225. Let's go to Josh in Tyler, Texas. Josh, what's going on, man? Hey, John. Hey, Anthony. How you guys doing? Good. How can we help, man? Uh, I am in a, I lost some matter in a pretty unique financial situation, a, a, a blessing. Um, but we're on step three B. We're saving up for a down payment on a house. Very cool. Um, my wife's a teacher, but m- my end is the unique part. Um, I am a, I'm a youth minister at a church, but we, like, I'm getting my master's program, and the program, my master's degree and the program that pays for my master's degree is also paying for our housing. Okay. All right, so we were going to go the traditional um, uh, manual underwriting ways, but we have no rental history. In fact, we only have two bills. Mm-hmm. Um, and so our my question is really, should I be still trying to get a manual underwriting way to go about getting a house Yes. or just have credit cards no. or gas only? Nope. No, you know? no, 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 no. Uh, and Josh, I want to definitely thank you for doing ministry, man. I, I know exactly where you are and where you're coming from, uh, because I, before joining the speakers group here, I was a full time uh, minister as well within the gospel. And mm-hmm. I had the exact opportunity, the same opportunity as you uh, to where I could. Um, I had housing. I had a housing allowance. And so for you right mm-hmm. now, the main thing is to, yes, reach out to church, your mortgage uh, and just tell them your situation. Um, and yes, they will help you get a home mortgage. OK. Um, and so mm-hmm. what what I would recommend is um, how much money do you have down to go towards a house right now? Well, it's, it's it, we're trying to figure out what to do for the next year and a half. I'm in this program for a year and a half longer, and we will have um, I think we're looking at thirty thousand for a, a down payment for a, a more than twenty five percent down payment for a house. So you're gonna have thirty thousand dollars in Texas. Oh yeah, that's good. So you can get you a nice little a home out there for about two hundred thousand, two twenty five, two fifty if you want to stretch it. Mm-hmm. And that's a beautiful home in Texas. You know, I'm kind of jealous of the homes in Texas. You know, because <laughs> Y'all can get a five, six thousand square foot home for for you know a quarter of a mil, and that out here would cost us a million. <laughs> and so um, I think that's a great route, thirty thousand dollars. And while what you're doing right now is, I will go ahead and call Church Your Mortgage and just start building that relationship with them. Tell them, hey, my time frame is about a year and a half. Uh, go ahead and allow them to pull your file and let them coach you on what you need to be doing. But right now, uh, just be renting and just pay off your stuff um, and just pay your light bills, your utility bills on time. Keep track of that. And you're going to be all right, man. Trust me. I did that. Um, and it, and it, was, it was perfectly fine. All right. Josh, you married? I am. It's just me and my wife. How long have y'all been married? We have been married, oh gosh, t- almost two years. Yeah, that's almost a number you got to know off the top of your head, man. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. So here's what I'm going to do. We've got a February 12th at 7 p.m. Money and Marriage live stream with me and my good friend Rachel Cruz. I'm going to give you a free ticket to this event. That way you can have a date at home. You don't even have to go anywhere. Y'all can dream about what this home is going to look like that y'all are going to buy. You can learn a couple of tips on how to stay married and connected in this madness season that we're in. And you can also learn how to deal with your money together. So hang on the line, and Kelly will get you hooked up. All right, let's go to Jack in Charleston, South Carolina. Jack, what's going on? Hey, guys. Uh, Thanks for having me on the show. Good to talk to you. You too, man. Thanks for calling. What's up? Yeah. All right. Um, It's just sort of a general question I wanted to bounce off of you. Um, You know, my wife and I, we owe uh, about $418,000 on our mortgage. Okay. Um, but we have a rate, a really nice rate at 2.375% for 15 years. We just refinanced. Okay. Um, we don't have a ton of debt besides the, the mortgage. What's and not a, have, hey, hey, Jack, what's not a, <clears throat> what's not a lot of money? Like how much debt do debt. you have? I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, how much debt do have, you have? Uh, the mortgage, 418000 Okay, so that's it. You don't have any consumer debt? Well, you know, just uh, we pay off our credit cards every month, but there's nothing. We, we have all, all of our cars paid off. Um, our, we have two kids in college. 
and uh, they're pretty much paid off, um, you know, with our 529 plans. So okay. all, all that's um, cool. in pretty good shape. All right. So my question is, um, we have this joint investment account, which is basically just a bunch of mutual funds that are, you know, help run by our financial advisor. And we have 770000 in that account. Okay. So my question is, you know, we're making decent money on that. You know, it could be 8 to 15%, just depends on the year. Is it worth it to drain that account and pay off the mortgage where our mortgage rate is, is only at, you know, 2 and 375? Uh, let me ask you this question. Do you have, what, what's your retirement situation look like, looking like? Any 401ks, any Roth IRAs? <laughs> What's your retirement fund? We do. Like? Okay. T- give me those we numbers. We do. We, um, yeah, we have uh, 401ks, my wife and I, and we also have a um, uh, Roth IRA. And the total amount is about $2.5 million. $2.5 million in both of those? Combined? Yeah, all combined. combined. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then you have a four hundred eight thousand uh, dollar uh, mortgage, and you say you have no mm-hmm. consumer debt. And then you, outside of, what's your savings account looking like right now as far as an emergency fund? You pretty good in that area? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, um, you know, we have probably about seventy or eighty thousand, you know, in savings or, or money that we can get to Great. pretty quick without taking any capital gains uh, you know, hits. Great. So what I do is like right now, um, uh, I am actually stacking money in mutual funds right now to go ahead and build my dream house in the next couple of years um, after I get married. And so when I find my house, right, I'm going to withdraw from my mutual funds and I'm going to pay cash uh, for my dream home. So in this situation, which you already having two point five million dollars in your retirement funds, you already have a fully funded mm-hmm. invested fund. Yeah, I would say go ahead and pay off your mortgage today. All of it. And that's still going to leave you with another two hundred something thousand dollars inside of uh, your mutual funds. What I would do is I'll just hop on there and maybe look into um, if you want to. I would probably look into buying maybe some more real estate and some more property uh, to start creating an, mm-hmm. another stream of cash flow for you. But to answer your direct question, uh, because you are following right. the baby steps and this mutual fund, America, who's listening right now, you're probably saying, well, wait, I thought you shouldn't withdraw funds from your mutual funds. No, there's two different kinds. You have one that's covered from retirement, which is a Roth. Then you have regular mutual funds that's just, that's just sitting there. You can withdraw for that because you're not withdrawing from your retirement. So I will go ahead and pay off your mortgage and then look into investing that uh, the rest of it as well, uh, Jack. Such a great question, man. You you and your wife are doing some extremely, extremely good stuff right now with your finances. All right, let's run to Rodney in New York. Hey, Rodney, we're up against the clock. Get right to your question, man. What's going on? Hi, John. Good afternoon, Anthony, too. Um, my question for you guys is my parents sat me down last week and told me that there's some money that I'm going to be taking over when I turn 25 um, later this year. Mm -hmm. Um, But they've already started to throw hints around what I should be doing with it. And, you know, over the past few years, as I started working, I've worked hard, I think, to set boundaries with my parents around, you know, what I'll be doing with my money and, and, and what, what, what freedom I'd like to have in making those decisions. So where's this money come from? Is it a, um, is it a trust? Is it inheritance? What's it from? It's, it's money that they had set aside for me and put, you know, in just investments from when I was a kid and I just never knew about it. So my guess Um, is they want to give you some money and this is going to, you're going to become a marionette. Is that correct? I'm not sure what a marionette is. It's a, it's a puppet that's, operated by strings um that's kind of what it seems like yes so here's the deal if you take money from somebody and they they want to tell you how to spend it it's their money right so i'm going to be very very careful anthony i don't know what you i'm going to be very careful before i accept money from other people or I'm gonna have my own, I'm gonna say once it's mine, this is mine. And if people wanna hold it over me, I'm gonna say thanks, but no thanks. This is the Dave Ramsey Show.
Welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, this is the Dave Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your money and your life. I'm Dr. John Deloney, here with best-selling author and good friend Anthony O'Neill, host of The Table with Anthony O'Neill, world-class YouTube and podcast, and we are here to take calls on anything going on in your hearts, in your minds, in your home, struggling with the person you see in the mirror, your kids, your family, your money, anything, give us a shout, 888-825-5225, 888 Five. Mm. All right, let's go to Lucas in Providence, Rhode Island. Lucas, how are we doing? What can we do to help? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. You bet. What's going on? Um, so I'm a freshman engineering student at URI, and I'm planning on working a lot, you know, over the summer, making a lot of money, and I should be able to graduate debt-free, you know, not going to have a lot of money after, but I should be able to graduate pretty much debt-free. Mm-hmm. But I'm wondering if I should take out a student loan anyways, just because it's looking like there might be some sort of relief bill going through government. So I don't know what you guys' thoughts are on that. Oh, you want to try to take out a loan and catch the see if you can get a year or two paid off for free. Is that what you're trying to just kind of back in scam the system? Yeah, because it's like um, I should be able to graduate that fee, but I'm not 100% sure, you know, so I figure – so if, why I did, you, if I did have to take one out, it would be towards the end. So things should I just do that now instead? You're you're asking questions. I'm going to turn this over to Anthony here, but you're asking should questions against a math problem. So you should be able to okay. know, here's what it's going to cost. Here's how much money I have and will earn. Not can, but will earn. Where's the should coming in yeah. from? Um, no, I mean, based on the math I did, I will be able to graduate debt free. Ah, that's just there you like go. Close. You know, I'll have like twenty bucks and a T-shirt to my name. You know, like hey, that's it. But. And you know what else you'll have? <laughs> no your dignity, your pride. You'll have accomplished something major, and then you'll be able to slide onto the next step. I'm gonna turn it over to Anthony. This is his wheelhouse. I ain't got nothing to say. He just said exactly what it what, what he said. So I, I'm going. I'm going to borrow money when I know I can become debt free. Hmm. That is that is that is a dumb move, Lucas. Don't yeah. do it. Okay. All right. That, that's a dumb move. If you know you can graduate 100% debt free, why do you still mm-hmm. want to go out there and put yourself in debt? Hoping so, and praying that the government will eventually come. I mean, ha- has the government not showed us that we cannot trust them? That that they are not, they do not make the right decisions when it comes to money. And so for you, Lucas, what I'm going to say, you already have it. Don't play with your life like that. Don't don't put yourself okay. in that in that situation, bro. You are a smart man. You are a young man. Do not make a dumb decision like that. I don't, I ain't, I don't even want to finish the conversation. Don't do it. That's it. You know, I hadn't considered somebody seeing this and thinking, "Ooh, I can just go take out loans for anything. For a car, I can take them but out that's, for that's rent, the, for that, TVs, uh, for another semester of college." Because no, the government's gonna come in on a cape with a Superman logo on it and save us. Yeah, but that's that. That is a stupid move. Oh man, the government said they may forgive student loans down the road. Well, let me go get this money just so in case if they do it. Cool, great. I got free money. Well, it's not free money. Somebody's gonna pay for it. If you don't think if that's a great point, if you get your loans forgiven, there will come a moment where you. 20 years down the road, 30 years down the road, 10 years, or worse, your kids are going to have to pay this back. Yeah. And if you can get through it, if you can work your butt off, grind, scrape, get through college debt-free, do it. Yeah, it's not worth it. And then, too, and I'm and I'm looking, and I'm studying, I'm seeing what's out there with, with this new administration uh, in the White House. Um, and, and if, 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 
if it does happen, there are some stipulations like community service hours and uh, stuff like that that comes along with this thing. So if you do not have to take it out at all, don't even consider it. Even if you think you have to, holla at me, come over to my show, come over to my YouTube, get my book, Debt Free Degree, and we will figure out a way to how to get you into college 100% debt free. But do not set yourself up to fail. Because you will set yourself up to fail. Let's go to the next All right, let's go to Tracy Um, in New Orleans. We're going to talk about this all day. You're going to get us all fired up. Call one. Tracy, what's going on? Hi, uh, thank you for taking my call. Uh, I had a question about uh, moving and what should I do in an old 401k that I had sitting with a company. Okay. Um, I worked worked for a company for 19 years. I moved to a different uh, job about six years ago. Okay. And they've been, I've had, I let that money sit there for now because I was, in a good relationship with the financial advisors who were uh, managing the money for me, and we talked a lot, but they just switched companies. Yeah. Don't know anything about the new company. I'm not too comfortable with it yet. I wonder if it would be a good idea just to – I was thinking about moving it and self-manage it from what I've learned – Nah. Working with my other nah. old financial advisor. Nah, nah, nah. I, what I would do, well, do you still do you have a financial advisor now? I was dealing with the guy who was at the old company. Should I need to, should I say the name of the company? No, nah, don't worry about it. So here, do this. Okay. Uh, what I want you to do is when you hang up with us, look up Smart Vester Pro. Go to, to uh, DaveRamsey.com. Look up one of our Smart Vester Pros. And I want you to interview one person. Or well, you're going to interview five people because five people are going to call you. And find you someone that can help you out. And what I want you to do is tell them you want to move your 401k over to a traditional, um, uh, traditional IRA. Do not move it over to a Roth IRA, Tracy, because here's the thing thing you're gonna be paying taxes on it exactly so move it over to a traditional 401k and then from there just have them advise you on what to do moving forward but honestly i would have did this two three years ago Um, even if i was comfortable with it comfortable with my financial advisor i still would have moved it over and so immediately what i'm doing uh top of next week on monday is i'm jumping on the phone i'm finding me a financial advisor i'm saying hey i want to move it over Uh, how much money do you have in it right now uh tracy about 200 yeah about 200k yeah man you need to move that on over um and get that invested into a growth stock mutual fund and uh we can go from there but absolutely bro that's what i would do i do appreciate that and i I just want to you know I'm just wondering if I should make that move or not. You know, it's it's not a wonder if. It's just I'm just wondering when are you going to do it. <laughs> and Anthony, you said the magic. T-A-X. It's that time of year again, folks. Tax season. Filling your taxes is like going to the dentist. No one wants to do it, but we all have to. And I get it. They're not fun, but it can be easier. Our new tax filing software, Ramsey Smart Tax, is a simple and reliable way to get your taxes taken care of without the extra hassle. I'm doing this with me and my family's money. That's how good it is. Prices- You're doing it too? I'm doing. I'm using the Ramsey Smart Tax product, so it's not something I'm trying to pitch that I don't use in my own house. Okay. Prices start at 17 bucks for federal taxes. Text tax to 33789. That's T A X to 33789. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. What makes our show unique is that we genuinely care about our listeners. We're intentional about choosing the best advertisers to recommend. Blinds.com is no exception. They offer high quality window treatments at unbelievable prices. And they make it simple to shop blinds, shades, and interior shutters with easy online ordering, free shipping, and a guaranteed perfect fit. Go to Blinds.com and take advantage of this week's special savings. This is the 
Dave Ramsey Show. I'm Dr. John Deloney with my good friend Anthony O'Neill. We are taking your calls on money and life. 888 5225 Let's go to Maria in Tampa, Florida. Maria, what's going on? Dr. John, Anthony, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it very much. You got yeah. it. What's going on? Okay, so my question is regarding behavior changes throughout the process, the debt-free process. Um, I know that we've made a bunch of positive changes, my husband and I. Um, I'm 27, he's 34, and we found Ramsey Solutions when we were homeless, living in a tent. Oh, wow. Thank goodness it's warm in Florida, but I mean, that's that's where we were. Okay. And we've, from that point, got gazelle in tents. We cash flowed into an apartment and all of the fixings, you know, the basic floor walls and everything. I have two small daughters. Now, my second one was just born in July. So after stork, stork mode, um, before my daughter was born, we, we've we kind of identified that both of us are impulsive, <laughs> compulsive. And uh, although I'm not spending money on things that are accruing new debt, I'm like, okay, there's $1,000 left on this card. There's an $1,000 emergency fund here. I can just build that back up. And, of course, that's like Murphy hits. So I totally drained our emergency fund. And then one thing after the other, back to the overdraft, to the overdraft. And just like a gut punch to myself and my husband, like at the same time. And... I am struggling with myself for making choices like that. Like, am I really evolving yep. in a positive way? Are we really taking steps forward? And then just some insight and wisdom into this whole process. Cause this is, it's, it's, it's a lot and yeah. it's, it's not just money. It's behavior too. And so Maria, I want to start yeah. this whole call off by telling you that you're courageous and I'm proud of you. Hmm. You've walked a journey that very few people in this country will ever understand. From a tent to an apartment to mom to wife to co-creator of a future that you don't even have a picture for, that is brave and that is hard. And Anthony and I salute you. Okay, so how did you guys end up in a tent? Um, uh, I think the main cause being living outside of our means. Okay. Um, we have both been chronically underemployed uh, since we've been together. We met when I like right before I turned 19, and um, I've been a CNA and I've been a, um, in a nursing home as an assistant. So I've done work and, and I'm a massage therapist and. I think that we weren't earning enough and then we were trying to rent a house that was just too much. And then, um, we did things like go on our honeymoon on a credit card (laughs) that I'm still paying off and stuff like that kind of builds up. So here's what I hear. I hear two people that know how to work their butt off that can grind it, can figure it out. And you made some mistakes with money. Mm -hmm. You didn't, you made some, you made some not wise decisions. So here's the thing. There is a difference between guilt and shame. You ever heard me talk about this? I don't think so. Okay. So I want you to think of guilt as a brick that you pick up. When you violate one of your core values, when you violate a, a, one of your ethical or moral boundaries, I think guilt can be a positive motivator. You got to sit in it for a second and it sucks. It hurts. It's annoying. It's frustrating. It makes you cry. It makes people around you go, yep, that was you. (laughs) Right? And so when it becomes shame is when you take that brick and you put it in your purse or your backpack and you say, I'm going to carry this forever because this is who I am. I'm always going to screw this up. I am always, right when we're on the precipice of of getting our money stuff together, I'm always going to be a joke. And here's the thing, Maria. It's hard for you to see it as you're telling us this story. I mean, Anthony and I, we're cheering you on. Yeah. You're an absolute rock star. And here's what you tried to do. You got so excited. You got so gazelle intense. You were running so fast, you tripped. Okay? You <laughs> tripped. And you tried to do one little thing outside the, the plan, right? We all have been there. We've all done it. And here's what I need you to do. I need you to forgive Maria. Dust yourself off and say... 
I, st- I, I thought I was going to do the baby steps plus one, plus Maria, Maria steps. <laughs> yeah. I stubbed my toe. It's good. We're back on. I'm back in. And here's the thing. You are going to have to practice a series of new behaviors because you've never done this before. Mm-hmm. And when you screw up, when your husband screws up, and uh, spoiler alert, he'll screw up too, okay? You can be graceful with one another. You can feel that guilt because it's appropriate. And then you can put that brick down and start running again. Yeah. Okay. And now I want you to take that grindy hard work, that hard work that you're working at a nursing home, you're working as a massage therapist, you're doing all these things. I want you to apply that to one or more positions in your area and your husband too, that pays you what you're worth. That's going to work you towards a career that you love. That's going to get you out of this cycle right? And it's going to be a season and it's going to be a challenge, but you're worth it and y'all can do it. And then you're going to keep plugging away at these baby steps day after day. It's boring, not sexy, not cool, no fireworks, but you're going to keep going. And then you're going to look up and y'all are going to have a whole new trajectory. And I heard that little girl's voice in your background. You're changing your family tree, Maria, right? Yes, sir. Right? Yes. Is your husband all in? He's all in. We're both all in. That's why it's felt like such a blow. Okay. So are we back up? Are you going to put the brick down? Totally. Back up. Backpack, purse, fanny pack of bricks all down. <laughs> and we're all in together? Yes. When's the last yes. time y'all had a date? Oh, my goodness. Uh, it's been a while. <laughs> all right. So here's what I'm going to do. I want you to stay on the line. Friday, February 12th. That's next Friday. Me and my friend Rachel Cruz, Dave Ramsey's daughter, are doing a special Valentine's Day date night money and marriage event. And we're going to help couples all over the country. This thing is selling like bananas. It's going to be a night where you can prop your feet up, get the kids to bed early, and you can prop your feet up. Y'all can hold hands. You can sit by each other on the couch, and we're going to talk to you about your marriage. We're talk to you about your money, how to come together even closer, how to forgive one another, how to grow. And then we're going to launch you off into the next 75% of 2021 on with some tools on how to be better married and better um, connected with your money. Does that sound cool? Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Hey, that's on us. And listen, man, we are in your corner. Anthony, what what words of wisdom do you have for our friend Maria? I don't have none. You did a great job. Yeah, when you get done with this phone call, I just want to talk to you. All right. Maria? Yes. Go forth, high five, have a date on us, and yeah. we were looking forward to seeing, hearing your debt-free scream in a few years when you call us back. What's up, Anthony? I mean, Matt, I mean, you're just giving away your event, ain't you? I mean, you feeling generous today? We've sold so many. We had this projection. It is selling and selling, and I, I am. After being in the, in the, <laughs> after being in the meetings, I keep thinking, this is an event I would want to watch. And I know that sounds ridiculous because we're a part of it, but when I'm listening to Rachel walk through her content and when I'm walk, I think I want to be sitting by my wife when this, when this, mm. when we hear this, mm. cause I want to ex- have this discussion together. And a couple of times, Anthony, I've gone home and said, Hey, Sheila, I'm thinking about t- telling this story. And she's like, there is 0% chance you tell that story. <laughs> that is staying in our house. But there is some things that I had to get permission. Like, you know what's so funny is you want to help everyone go home to have a real good Valentine's night with their spouse. Yep. And you're going to go home and you're going to be sleeping on the couch. I'm going to call Anthony and say, listen, you got a real nice place. It's Valentine's. I'm like, you ain't coming over here, buddy. Can I stay in your basement? No, sirree. Uh, yes, I am. Uh-uh. I won't be no man or no Valentine's. Listen. Uh-uh. I'll stay downstairs. You should, you, but I'm you, coming to your place for you Valentine's. Should've, you should have shut up. No. Nope. You should have done. Ladies and gentlemen, Marriage and Money, February 12th. Get your tickets at DaveRamsey.com. I promise you it's going to be good. I promise. Anthony, you should be. I'm going to give you a code, too, my man. I ain't going. <laughs> you are. I'm just going to go on your little uh, laser watch you got there, your Apple watch. I don't know what they're called. This is the Dave Ramsey Show.
talk to Carter in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Carter, what's going on? How can we help? Hey guys, thanks for having me. Um, you, you bet. So I'm a college student. Um, I'm in my second year of school. I'm 20 years old and I'm graduating early next year in May. Um, and I have $31,000 in student loan debt and I'm just wondering how do I go about paying off my next three semesters counting this next summer where I don't have to take out more student loans? All right, such a great question, man. How much does it cost you to go to uh, school a year? Um, with my federal FAFSA and everything, it's about two thousand dollars per semester. All right, so you have two semesters, uh, um, correct? Three left. I have classes this summer too. All right, cool. So you have six thousand dollars that you need to come up with, correct? Yes. All right, are you working? I am working. How many hours a week are you working? Um, right now, I'm trying to put in 15 to 20. I'm working from like remote access and doing stuff for my dad because I will have a job secured next year afterwards, too. Okay, cool. Are you living at home or are you living on the dorms? Um, I'm living in a house in my college town. Okay, cool. Are you paying for that out of pocket or is that inside your tuition? Yep, that's out of pocket. Okay, cool. Great. So this is what this is. You literally have the answer to your question right there. If you're working a minimum of 15 to 20 hours, if you're just doing bare minimum wage, uh, you can go ahead and cash flow that six thousand dollars because the average uh, cost of tuition is like ten thousand dollars. That comes out to about nine hundred dollars a month. So you're right around six fifty, six seventy five top end of what you need to come up with on a monthly basis to cash flow the rest of your school experience. So if I'm you, I'm sitting down and I'm budgeting out and making sure that between myself and my family we can come up with top top in seven hundred dollars a month to cash flow the next three semesters which is six thousand dollars real easy real simple very straight to the point okay sounds good there we go <laughs> appreciate you man anthony i love it when Someone calls with a complex problem, and your response is, that's not complex. You know, I was watching this thing that uh, Cody, your uh, brand manager, gave me. He said, Dr. Phil, Do he said, someone asked Dr. Phil and said, hey, man, uh, it was Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan asked Dr. Phil, like, how are you, you know, having these, 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 you know, hard conversations? He said, no, I'm, I'm not having a hard conversation. They're asking me a hard answer, and I'm just giving them a simple answer. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, there's, there's complicated situations. Yeah, but, but the answer is pretty simple. Simple. Yeah, you know that's simple. Simple math. Okay, you got six thousand dollars. You got a year to a two, three semesters. That's a year and a half to knock that out. Yeah, bro. Listen here. That's easy. Do the math. Get Break it. it down. Break it down to per month of what you need to do. Right. Now, if he would have told me he needs a hundred thousand right. dollars, then okay, yeah, the math doesn't make sense. So now that we need to do something different. Right. But if all you need is six thousand dollars. We could come up with six thousand dollars in three semesters. That's right. It's easy. Uh, no, I love it. All right, let's go to uh, David in Indianapolis. David, what's going on? Uh, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for taking my call. You yeah. got it, man. Um, my question is, how do I handle collections before they contact me? And the reason why I have it phrased like this is because I. I've checked my credit report recently, and I have noticed two, what I believe to be medical bills, stuck in collections that I have no recollection of. Mm. And how do I handle that debt before I get these calls? So are you saying that that you're not aware of this debt as far as it, it could be possibly fraud? Or are you saying, yeah, I owe it, but how do I reach out to them first? What, what are you saying? Um, I want to know how do I reach out to them first because okay. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm at fault with those because it could be fraud. I'm not 100%. Cool. So normally what happens within collections, they have 30 days. So once they acquire the account, the bill collector, um, they have 30 days to send you a notice letting you know that, that, hey, they are collecting on this medical bill. Within that time frame, you have the right to dispute any charges, jump on the phone with them and file a dispute. Or you can go, if it's already on your credit report, there should be a name and a number. And I would just call them and say, hey, I see this on my credit report. I'm not fully aware of this. Can you help me 
uh, understand where this is coming from. And so I can backtrack and see if this is a bill of mine. If it is a bill of yours, uh, then one of the key, not key secrets, but the key things I tell everyone when dealing with a collection agency, don't pay it within the first three weeks of the month, pay it within the last five business days of the month. Uh, because bill collectors are commission ran um, and they're, they're base salary, but they make all their money off of commissions. And so if you want to pay them within the last three to five business days, I mean, heck, as long as you got the money, you know, I, I, for me, I would wait to the last business day of the month because that's when they'll cut deals because they're trying to make their commission check. Um, but if you don't owe it, then you're not paying them nothing. Do you need to file a dispute with your credit repair credit report, uh, file a dispute with the actual company um, and go from there? But the first thing is you need to reach out to them, David, and just say, hey, ma'am, sir, I see this. I need information so I can validate or non-validate uh, this account is mine. And then from there, you move forward whichever way you need to move forward with. Make sense? Yes. And David, I, I, I'm. I, this yeah. is a, a an additional question here that I must ask him back. So when you look at your credit report and it's got two medical debts on there, are you have no recollection of going to the doctor or a surgery or some sort of? Uh, not to my knowledge. There is a good possible chance that I have been. I just. How would, you, team, it's how would you not know if you've had a surgery? I'm not sure. Well, if it sometimes, was a or not. well, David, okay. sometimes that stuff is not from the last two months. More than likely, that medical stuff could be up to a year. Two years, year it and could a be half. a long yeah, time. Yeah, it could yeah. be a long time uh, from now. And the hospital was trying to collect on it. Then they sold it to a outside collection agency. So I, I can't say it doesn't happen, but it's not too often uh, medical bills are fraud. And so I would lean on the side that side that it is yours and maybe that your health insurance provider um, didn't pick up that balance um, and go from there. But the key thing is, David, you know, just make sure that if it is yours, take advantage of of making them sweat a little bit um, and try to settle in full um, if you can't afford to pay for it in full the last three to five business days of the month. Do you feel like you'll always be yes. stuck paying off your debt? No. Anthony? No. Look at you already answering. See? Well, I've got something for you, Anthony. You'll, If you feel like you'll never have extra money to save or spend, I need you to know this, Anthony. Mm -hmm. And anybody listen, it doesn't have to be that way. It's time for a new way of thinking. Hey, man. You have to believe you can get rid of this and take control of your money because you can. Yes. And it won't take nearly as long as you think it will. With Ramsey Plus, we'll kick off. 90 days of guided help so you can put more of your money back in your bank account. In the Ramsey Plus program, Anthony's got a ton of information. I've got stuff in there. Our friends Ken and, and Chris and Rachel, Dave, everybody's got cool stuff in there to walk alongside you to teach you practical ways to get small, consistent wins that add up to big results and better habits. And that means you'll get where you want to be faster debt-free, and spending your money without worry. This year, you can make more progress on your debt and saving more than you ever have. Get Ramsey Plus and start living the life you want faster. Start Ramsey Plus for free. Text TRIAL to 33789. That's TRIAL to 33789. Anthony, someone's thinking, what, what, what is, would somebody do in Ramsey Plus? Talk to them about stuff you've got in that program. Well, for me, man, I'm actually ask, answering a lot of the most common questions. Okay. That's what I'm doing in there. Um, it's because I'm just I'm taking myself back down to, you know, the average person in America. And sometimes when you get in a program like this, Financial Peace University, you have some questions about this, about, okay, credit cards, debit cards, getting finance. So for me, I'm bringing solid solutions and answers to the most common questions. And I love it. So uh, that's what I would say I'm bringing to it. And it's amazing. It changed my life and it can change yours. Remember, the caliber of your future will be determined by the choices you made today. Make the right choice and sign up for Ramsey Plus. This is the Dave Ramsey Show.
today's scripture of the day is John 14, 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring you, your remembrance, all that I've said to you. Lou Holt says, it's not the load that breaks you down. It's the way you carry it. It's not the load that breaks you down. It's the way you carry it. Lou Holtz is one of a kind, man. He's a general, brother. One of a kind. All right, let's go to Christopher in Cincinnati, Ohio. Christopher, what's going on? How can we help? Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me. You got it. What's going on? Hey, you know, my wife and I, we, we've been listening to your show um, here for a while now, and we actually have been fortunate enough to pay off all of our credit card debt. Um, Congratulations, you know, man. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, it, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. It, you know, it took a few years to save up, but... You know, now that we have that that big chunk saved off, uh, paid off, and um, you know, listening to your show, you know, you guys talk about saving for a nest egg. What is that right number to save for a nest egg, and can you break that up into like a long term savings with investments, or would you recommend, you know, saving that nest egg in cash? Um, we just started budgeting in January um, okay. going forward to like track all of our spending Very cool. and, and really look forward to you know continuing to build our savings and and just investing for our future. Yeah. And we just want to know what the best move would be. Like, should we, should we, you know, notch away at the student loan debt? Should we notch away at the home or should we just, you know, save it all in cash? Yeah. Good question. Good question, Love Christopher. It. So here's the thing, man. We have the first three baby steps is something that I want you to follow in order. We, we don't break these for nothing. So right now you should have a thousand dollars in your emergency fund nest egg right now. Okay. Then we baby got step- over that. You got over that. How much? How much do you have in your nest egg right now? Uh, well, and and so we have about a little. Uh, you know, as of close of the market yesterday, about fifty eight hundred in the in the market and mutual funds. Okay. Um, we got about three thousand in cash. Okay, cool. So you got three thousand dollars in cash. Okay, cool. And you got fifteen hundred dollars in your mutual funds. All right, cool, great. So this means three thousand dollars in cash. Now, how much total consumer debt do you have left uh, left over, excluding your mortgage? None. Well, you just, I thought you just said you had some credit cards or something like that. Student loans. Student loans. Oh, student loans, yes. We have about 30000 together. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So consumer debt. So let, me, let me help you out with this. Anytime we say consumer debt, that is anything. If you owe anybody anything, that is debt, including your mortgage. Okay? So student loans are still debt. So I want to make sure we're clear. You have student loans. You don't have any credit cards, do you? Or do you? No. Okay, cool. Do you have a, a car payment? We paid them off. Okay, cool, great. So, so right now you're in baby step number two. All right, you're paying okay. off all of your student loans. You're not waiting for the government to see what they're going to do, see if they're going to forgive. If they're going to forgive, the most they're going to forgive right now is from what I'm seeing, if it happens, about ten to fifteen thousand dollars. Okay, so right now you're in baby step number two. You're paying off all of the student loans. You're not really worried about having a bigger nest egg right now. I want you to focus on getting out of all of your debt completely. Then we're going to go over to baby set number three and set aside three to six months for a fully funded emergency fund, a.k.a. a fully funded nest egg. So three to six months of expenses. So you're going to break down your expenses based upon what do you need to live you know, your mortgage payment, your rent payment, your utilities, your food, um, you name it. What do you need to live? That That's what we call expenses. But right now, you're not worried about that. You're not worried about investing into a mutual fund. You're not worried about investing into a Roth IRA and a 401k. Right now, you're sitting in baby set number two. You're going to get those student loans. You're going to break it down from smallest to largest. Then you're going to be attacking it, the very first one, the smallest one, putting all of your eggs onto that one. You're going to work the, the debt snowball to to that method, all right? So you got $3,000. i am taking $2,000 out, putting that on top of the $30,000. i am down to twenty eight, dollars and then I'm grinding to get the $28,000 out of the way by the end of this year. Then boom, next year, me and my wife, we're debt-free. We're going to get a fully funded emergency fund. Then we're looking to purchase a home. So that's what I would recommend, man. And I appreciate you calling in. And you know what's so funny is, John? Um, Harvard just recently came out with a study uh, saying that the that 
these Harvard professors, you know, every now and then I, 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 I tend to, you know, disagree with them. But on this one right here, they, they hit this one on the head, but they hit this one on the head. Uh, all these high end people like you, you know, all these doctors and, <laughs> and, and people like you, educated people, uh, actually nailed this one on the head, John, you know, every once in a while, every now, every now and then. And they said that the best way to pay off your debt. Is by what? The debt snowball method. Not the avalanche avalanche method, paying off highest interest down to the smallest one. They said the best way to attack your debt. Harvard said it is the debt snowball. And they I think I think they listened to us, bro. I think that's what it was. They was listening to me and Dave, not you, because you were doctor too. And they was listening to me and Dave who are not doctors. And, and they heard us say that this is not a math problem. You need momentum, you need excitement, and you need problem. energy. That's right. And you need to trick your brain. Right. And it's, I was like, yo, Harvard, okay, if I go back to school, I may consider you. And then I woke up and said, I ain't going to Harvard. Because <laughs> that, man, man ain't going sometimes to I'm sitting on the radio and Anthony just tosses me softball after softball and you just got to let him go by. Yes. Go by. You can't swing it. None yes. of them, man. I mean, you're the doctor, you know what I'm saying? You know, so, so you educated. The hardest thing, hey, listen. I spent some time at a, at a small program for a few weeks there at Harvard. Can I tell you the most frustrating part? What was it? I wanted so badly, Anthony. I wanted so badly for Harvard to be this big media fabrication. I was going to get there. I already had my PhD. I, I was going to be like, man, eh, we're all same team, same team. Man, Anthony. They, I, hey, I, hey. I, I wouldn't they were real smart is well, all I'm saying. Listen, They man. were real smart. I you remember know, sitting there going, Argh. You know I got invited. I actually I got, got a, smarter than me. She's smarter than me. She's smarter than me. See, so see, I, I'm just, you know, I don't know. But you know, I, I'm going to say the name of the school because I don't want to be disrespectful. And I may end up going there. I don't know. But you know, there was a big Ivy League school that, you know, offered me a full ride okay. to finish my degree. No chance that happened, but go ahead. Yeah, no chance that it's going to happen. 0%. Well, I'm not going to say zero. I mean, I may go back. I mean, because I believe education is important. Right. But one of the main reasons why I said no is because I don't want that on top of me. You know, I'm teaching young people to go to any school that you can afford. And an Ivy League school is not that important. Is it a great opportunity? Yes. But just because you graduate from Harvard and these other Ivy League schools doesn't make you any, it will not make you any better than going to a community college. Because I know a lot of people who went to prestigious schools, but they're not prestigious individuals. Mm -hmm. And I know people who start off at a community college, graduated from an in-state school or went to trade school or went to seminary school, and they came out more prestigious than people who went to prestigious schools. So I just want to put that out there, you know, for all the people. But I, I, I want to give Harvard their love and their credit. <laughs> You I'll know, say this. this I've got two doctorates. If any Ivy League school wants to pay me to get another one, I'm happy to sign up today. But, Anthony. If any in-state school want to give me a full ride, I'll sign up today. I'll done. put it out there. If any in-state, local in-state school in Tennessee wants to give me a full ride, I'll go. Any HBCU want to give me a full ride, I'll sign up today. Ivy Leagues, ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we're different. All right, so, hey, listen, that last caller had an important call out here, and I've heard this. I've been working with college students for years. I know you've heard this. Tell me you don't continue to hear this, man. I've got debt, but that's not student loans because they don't count. Student loans is not debt, only credit cards and what I owe mom and maybe some medical stuff, but student loans don't count as debt. It's yeah, not real. And that's because society says that student loans is good debt. Mortgages are good debt. And our philosophy here... Um, is debt is debt. We don't believe in the term good debt or bad debt. We hmm. just believe in the term debt is debt. And the only debt we are okay with having is a 15-year fixed rate mortgage. Hmm. But a student loan debt is still debt. You're still paying interest. It is the number two crisis in America right now. People have a mortgage payment but don't own any freaking real estate. That is that is debt. How is it that you owe a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars in in debt, and you're saying this is not debt? No, this is debt. Okay, so listen, debt is debt. Is Pay debt is off. debt is debt is debt. Debt is debt. Say goodbye to debt and never see her again or see him again. However you want to phrase it. I want to. Th I want to thank <laughs> Kelly and James for quarterbacking a great show today, Anthony. Yes. I want to thank Kelly for giving away all of your event tickets. Thank you, Kelly, for. Uh, whew, he was working you today in that area. Hey, join us for the Marriage and Money event. Anthony, it's always fun. America, thanks for joining us. Have a good, good week, good weekend. Be kind to one another. This is the Dave Ramsey Show.